Hiya, and welcome back again. Um, slightly different backdrop today. So my husband is actually using our study slash library at the moment. So I'm upstairs where we have got all sorts of random books, some kids books behind me, some reference books off to that side. And yeah, let's see if we can make this work. So somehow it is now September. Uh, so I have got my August wrap up for you today. Um, August was a really good month actually. I read 11 books, which is pretty much my new normal. Uh, I was tracking at like 12 books a month, um, but uh, yeah, things are a bit busier, I've been a bit more tired, um, so I think yeah, 11 is kind of normal at the moment, we'll probably settle around 10. Um, I think, but we'll just see, just playing it by ear and appreciating what I do read, um, read some books that I really enjoyed, um, so that was good. So the split that I read for the month, I read four paperbacks, um, Handley, the same number as the number that I bought, so I didn't increase my physical TBR, uh, sadly didn't decrease it either, but it's a start. Um, I also read four four arcs, um, which is the most I've ever read, it's more than half of the arcs I've ever read, because uh, I've only just started doing that the last few months. Um, I read two other ebooks, and I actually finished an audiobook for the first time in months. So yeah, let's get through. So the first book that I read was Hunt on Dark Waters by Katie Roberts. So this was an arc that I was ecstatic to get, like so up for this. So this is the first book in the new uh, fantasy romance series, which is a pirate series. I love the idea of the setup. So this does interconnect with the Deal with the Demon series only in that it's sort of set in the same universe. So in this one we have got Evelyn who is a witch. She's a bit down on her luck, things aren't going amazingly and she has a little bit of a fallout with her very much lover, not girlfriend, vampire. Um, and basically it ends up stealing something from her and jumping into a random portal not knowing where it goes. Turns out where it goes is Threshold, um, which is where all the realms interconnect. She lands in the water um, and gets fished out by a pirate crew, the captain being Bowen. Um, so she's forced to join the crew uh, because it's that all be killed and he is put in this situation where he has to keep her in line or according to the rules of his people he will have to kill her um but she makes some really good points as to why she shouldn't be kept in line and yeah it is the romance it is amazing there's obviously a lot of forced proximity um we have an utterly beautifully chaotic bisexual heroine like this whole series is apparently going to be queer as hell, which I am absolutely all for it. Katie Robert is amazing for a rep like that. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see where this series goes. So then the next book that I read was Up From The Grave by Janine Frost. So this is the seventh book in the Night Huntress series, but I think in the world of, as a whole, it's maybe book 11, something like that, because there's been some that focus on like different couples. Um, but this one is back with Cat and Bones and them kind of dealing with the follow up from some things that have happened earlier. I can't really talk about like the plot too much because it would be massive spoilers for the series as a whole, as happens when a series uh, follows the same couple all the way through. Um, it was good, but it wasn't my favourite. So Janine Frost is a great author, so it was a really readable book. But for me, I was very frustrated because I felt like I felt like we took a step backwards. I think in the last book of theirs that I read. I felt like they've actually made some massive steps and got over some of their issues and it felt like we'd taken a step back to 
no trust and just everything yeah it's just, I don't know something about it just didn't feel as good um but I still enjoyed it very much I am really looking forward to carrying on with the rest of the series and yeah so this is basically just like a vampire series it's very much like paranormal romance in vibes but it does follow the same couple as you go through and definitely worth checking out it's a really really good series as a whole and then I actually read a book that had been sat on my Kindle for ages I'm terrible this year at actually reading books that have been I've bought previously so that was Blood Thinners by Heather Novak um, and this one is another <laughs> vampire paranormal romance so in this one we have got Mina um, our main heroine who's a her point of view and she works for an agency that deals with supernatural so they're keeping them in line vampires and things like that if anything goes wrong um, and they have to investigate anything that looks like suspicious paranormal activity and this investigation that she gets taken on after returning from injury is to a diet pill company um it's all like a replacement food type of thing and there she is investigating the manager of the company and her daughter karma and it is mina and karma's uh romance that we have so there is that thing where karma obviously doesn't know that she's being investigated because mina's in there undercover um Mina herself has a complete lack of emotional intelligence and um, at times that does make it a very difficult read um, but I did really enjoy it overall and the side characters absolutely made it um, there's a couple of ghosts in it that are just hilarious they are just such good friends to the humans that they work with absolutely love them and there's also I think it was a demon um, who makes a couple of appearances who is also hilarious and a really nice guy so yeah I actually ended up enjoying pretty much every other character more than the heroine um, but it is a really good sapphic paranormal romance option and then because I apparently hadn't read enough vampires to last me a lifetime I read Burn For Her by Brianna Michaels. Um, so this is one that I picked up uh, when I went to Rath, Romance Sorcerer from Reader Events. Um, I had read one of Brianna's books in the run-up, but hadn't actually got as far as um, the paranormal books. So this is the first book in the Reflection series, and we have got Dorian, who is a vampire, and Lena, who is a human so in this world the vampires if they look into a mirror um the same time that their fated mate is looking at their reflection um then they will see their fated mate and once they know who they are they have to claim them um within a short time otherwise it basically makes them um really ill and dorian has tried to avoid this uh, forever because he thinks this is a big risk and he doesn't think he's the sort of person um, that should have a fated mate but he does accidentally see Lena in her reflection and it's the two of them so she's having to get used to the concept of how dangerous things are but she really is someone who can stand up for herself um and take care of things and she completely like wants in on this, his world and with him whereas he's got quite a damaged past um and that's sort of given him a bit of an emotional block and also a bit of concern as to like what it would mean for her um to be in his world i really love the dynamic of it and also just shifters because he had spent some time with shifters when he was younger um they they just had the best dynamic like such a good interfering family uh type thing it was really good so yeah i'm very excited to carry on with this series and we're gonna ignore the fact that i've once again started another series but 
yeah I keep doing but there we go <laughs> we'll get there eventually and then I took a break from vampires for a book uh, so the first book of the month that I read that didn't have any vampires in was Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert so I read this um basically as it released it was maybe a couple of days after that i started it just because of how the timings worked so this is the fifth book in the dark olympus series and this one is aphrodite and hephaestus adonis and pandora i caught all four of them i think that's the first time i've remembered all four so this is an mmff open poly not uh book so the Dark Olympus series is all about political intrigue and the kind of game playing that happens in Olympus amongst like the Twelve in particular. So in this one we have got Hephaestus and Aphrodite who have a political marriage of convenience. So Hephaestus is seen somewhat as an enemy um, to Olympus even though he is now one of the ruling 12 and Aphrodite has said that you know she'll get married to him to make him look less dangerous and also to give everyone something to talk about however <laughs> Aphrodite's old flame Adonis is obviously not very happy with this and she is still pretty much in love with him as well Hephaestus is aware of this and so makes sure that Adonis runs into her at various opportunities and then Aphrodite decides she's going to get revenge um, with Pandora, who is Hephaestus' little sister and basically his best friend as well. So uh, Aphrodite goes and hooks up with Pandora. So then Hephaestus gets mad and goes and hooks up with Adonis. Um, and we eventually end up in a situation where we have got a nice little three-way thing between Aphrodite, Hephaestus and Adonis. And then we also have a separate thing between Aphrodite and Pandora, hence the open polynot uh, situation. And for most people, I would be like, this isn't going to work. Like, there's no way you can balance uh, the different relationships, the plot, um, just get everything in the right thing, feeling like you know all the characters and like everything has a purpose that it makes sense um but of course this was written by katie robert and they are just the absolute best at this stuff it was so good i was just absolutely obsessed with it um highly highly recommend this series and um, i'm already so excited um for the next one so then i went back to paranormal romance and I read The Queen's Temptation by Elliot Rose. So this is the third book in the Nocturnal Hearts series. Um, I was reading this one because I knew I was about to get the arc for her fourth book, so I wanted to make sure that I was all caught up. So in this one we have got Niall, who is a witch, um, and his brothers have been in earlier books. And we have got Ruby, who is a fae. Um, and they kind of meet uh, by chance when Niall knows he's just about to take on a new job, Ruby is about to take on some more responsibilities as well, and they just have a night where they just wanna be themselves, have some fun. Nothing gets too far, um, but when Niall does then report in for his new job as the future Fae Queen's bodyguard, he finds out that the future fake queen is in fact Ruby, uh, who he had met. And for Ruby, this is a slight problem because for Faye, once they kiss their fated mate, they know that it's their fated mate. Um, so she knows that Niall is the one for her, uh, but he is obviously completely forbidden um, being her bodyguard. Um, with the fact that, you know, she is supposed to be preparing to lead her kingdom because um, it was kind of unexpected for her she was never supposed to be the heir it just happened this one it is spicy spicy hot um, but for me of the series it is the best balanced in terms of kind of the characters the plot and the spice um, because we have a lot of 
intrigue with what's going on. How has the Fey Kingdom ended up in the situation that it's in? And the things in Niall's background that have got him to where he is as well. Uh, we do also have some vampires that they go and visit. Just thought I'd put that in there, seeing as apparently it was the month of the vampire for me. Um, Niall's powers are empathic powers um so he can tell people's emotions and kind of affect their emotions and things like that um so it's kind of cool seeing how that impacts the balance um of the two of them together in that one so yes then after that i carried on with the series and i read book four which is vicious cravings so as i say this one was an arc that i got i got this arc directly from the author because she did a sign up for her arc team so this one is a thruple so we have got now who is a witch we've got hunter who is a vampire and we have got ace who is also a vampire so in this one hunter and ace are an established couple they know that they um, are fated mates, but they also know that they're bundled for member three people, and so there's sort of that gap in there. Um, and it's actually Hunter that comes across now first, because she is putting herself in dangerous situations um, to try and find a plant that she needs to heal a different vampire. So after a bit of persuasion um, and her putting herself in a dangerous situation a few too many times hunter takes her back to his and ace's home um and things kind of go from there so i quite liked the the plants aspect of it actually weirdly i don't know where i'm someone who would literally manage to kill plants that are supposed to be unkillable um but i did really like all the plants Ace had um, a massive, massive like greenhouse type room. I can't think of the name right now. Words kind of escaped me. Um, and that was something that like him and Nell were working on together. She was using her healing magic for that. Um, and there was kind of some good conversations um, in terms of the monster that was inside him and the monster that was inside her and Hunter kind of dealing with that all. But for me, the balance of the book wasn't quite right. Um, there was a lot <laughs> of sex scenes of varying sorts. Um, we had every combination of two of them or the three of them. There was a lot of sharing of bodily fluids that I'm not going to lie did weird me out of it. For some people would probably be fine. Um, and I know a lot of people have absolutely loved this one they are just like yeah it's super hot it's amazing it is and it is pretty it is pretty hot i'm not gonna lie um it's just for me the balance wasn't quite right um so yeah i guess make your own decision so then in the shock of the year i actually finished another audiobook um so it was that kind of guy by Talia Hibbert. So this is the third book in the Ravenswood series, um, which is a contemporary romance series um, set in a small town outside of Manchester. Um, so in this one we have got Zack and we have got Ray. So Zack has been in both of the previous books. Um, he is a blacksmith and he is friends with Evan um, from the first book and he is Nate from the second book's little brother and then we have got Ray who she moves to town in the second book um, she's slightly older she is divorced which has so many people in the town talking because the audacity of her turning up divorced and she has a scar on her face as well um, and she is an author so at the start of this book, Zach and Ray have become fast friends. They will both look to spend as much time together as possible. So Ray is going to be going to an author convention where her ex will be there and she has sort of stayed away from them because she feels like she's a bit of a fraud, but her book is actually up for a prize. Um, so she really wants to go, but she's really worried again about seeing her ex. 
so Zach agrees to go as her fake date. Um, so Ray is actually very attracted to uh, Zach, um, but as he's confided in her, he is demisexual and he sees her as like a really good friend, but hasn't really felt any sexual attraction towards anyone for a long time. Um, so we have this lovely uh, fake dating friends to lovers uh, situation going on and it's it's really lovely particularly with Zach starting to notice the changes in how he's feeling um, and just all the little changes in the dynamic um, also in terms of rep as well as this being an interracial romance with demisexual lead um, is Ray has Pots. Um, so she has issues if she stands up too quickly where she will faint um, and um, Zach is really sweet in dealing with that um, and she is just the most incredibly strong woman. Um, it is also a bit of an age gap, I think they're 12 years apart, she's older. Um, so yeah, lots of different hit boxes. But I just adore this series and it was just such a beautiful, beautiful end to it. Um, the best friend groups and yeah, I really do want to read pretty much everything that Talia Hibbert has ever written because they're so good, so good. And then back on the ARC bandwagon because I had a slight oopsie and got approved for a million things on that galley at the same time. <laughs> Um, I read This Spells Disaster by Tori and Martin, um, so I was really excited to get this because I already have a pre-order uh, for when it releases in a couple of weeks time. Um, I literally, when the description for this dropped on Instagram, I had people messaging me going, this sounds like your sort of book. So they weren't wrong, <laughs> it really does. So this one is another sapphic paranormal romance, this time between two witches. So we have got Morgan, who is a potions witch, and then we have got Rory, who is an elemental witch, who is a relative newcomer um, to their town, was previously kind of a competition performer, um, but has given that up and is now just bartending in this this small town that Morgan lives in and has grown up in. Um, the book is entirely from Morgan's point of view, um, which it wouldn't really work if it was your point of view, so I thought it was actually a good choice um, in this case. So there is a festival coming up um, to celebrate all things witchy basically. They are all getting together with stalls and displays and things like that. So the shop that Morgan works for um, will have a stall there. Um, but Rory's a bit worried because her parents are putting pressure on her to get back into competing. They're trying to set her up with someone who is on the competition circuit and she doesn't really want that. So Morgan says, hey, why not? Why don't I fake date you? Um, and then goes, why did I say that to someone that I've had a crush on for ages? But there we go. Um, but eventually Rory does agree and so they fake date their way through this festival. Um, the dynamics between the two of them are like their coven, their families, their friends and things like that are really cute. But yeah, for the two of them, um, it's there's a lot of uh, working out what they want, what it is that makes them happy, what it is that they want to do um, with their lives and their relationships. It is, yeah, it's a really, really lush romance. It's so autumn vibes as well, fall vibes if you're American. Um, so definitely a good one to read at this time of year. Um, and yeah, definitely one that I would recommend and I'm so excited that I got to read it and that I'm going to get to hug a physical copy soon. And then the fourth arc that I read this month was Not Just Gal Pals by Elizabeth Lely. 
So this one is a Suffolk contemporary romance set in a small town. So we have got Jenny who is an influencer who is based in LA but has had some bad press. She's been hit a bit by cancel culture and so she's going to go back to her hometown for her friend's wedding anyway and decides to take a bit of time out there. And then we have got Blake who is the doctor um, in that town and she was obsessed with Jenny at high school but never really acted on anything, kept all to herself. Um, but she has had some bad experiences in relationships so she's decided she's just going to stick to herself and stick to her medicine and kind of prioritise what she needs to do. But because they're both involved in their friend's wedding they obviously bump into each other quite a lot um, and decide that maybe having a fling while Jenny's in home wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, so with that kind of set up, um, it didn't do anything amazingly different but what it did do, it did very very well. I really loved, they have this like cafe bookshop thing, um, which George runs I think her name is. Um, so good, I would just like the vibe of it and like doing that sort of thing in a small town does sound absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Definitely, if you like small town romances, um, then check this one out. And then finally, uh, I read Archangel's Resurrection by Nalini Singh. So this is book 15 in the Girl Hunter series, and at the moment is the most recent release. Um, the next one is due out at the start of next year. So I finally caught up on another long running series, which is a bit weird. Um, so this one is two archangels, so it is Alexander and it is Zanny. So they are both archangels that woke up during the cascade, they got woken up and it is their love story. This is absolutely the longest running book um, that I have read. So it starts in, I guess, present day if you're looking from like the end of the last book um, but then we jump back to when Alexander was little um, and then to when Zanny was little so Alexander is a good couple of thousand years older than her uh, so we're talking long spans of time in general um, and the two of them realize that they have this connection um, when she's still quite young but because he is such a power, he doesn't want to affect her career. He doesn't want her to like not have the right opportunities. So I think the book's been going on for like 3,000 years before they get together. <laughs> um, and yeah, it is this beautiful on again, off again, over the ages, love story of the two of them trying to balance their feelings for each other and their need to be seen by the world as strong strong angels and you kind of see that their lives together their lives apart and then eventually kind of after after zanny goes to sleep um you catch back up to where things were um, to her waking up which you see happen in the earlier books and then fast forward again another 10 years um, before you get to the end of their love story I know for some people it's not going to be one for them um, because it is that long build but I really loved it I just thought the two of them their characters and what their priorities were before and then what their priorities become I just thought was so lovely um I love that this is another one that is set in um North Africa as well so Zanny is known as the Queen of the Nile um whereas Alexander is the Archangel of Persia um so it's all kind of set around that part of the world um, which I really enjoyed because it made a change from reading books set in America <laughs> um, and yeah it was just really beautiful and yeah 
a lush place to be. I definitely would recommend this series if you want like an angels, uh, a paranormal romance series. You've got a mix, you've got some books that follow uh, the same main couple and then some like this one that are with other couples and yeah it's really good definitely check it out and it'll be exciting to get to read the next one like as it releases so yeah those were the 11 books that i read in august it was a good fun month and i am very excited for this month i don't actually know what my video is going to be next week because i have ended up a bit off track because the last couple of weeks have been a bit busy uh, but we will see hopefully i will see you soon bye